Buongiorno e benvenuti a Lusi. Salamu alaikum, ahla wa sahla bi Lugano. Bienvenue, benvenue, grüezi da Lugano. It's a very, very happy event to be here on the sixth edition of the MEM Summer Summit Forum. I'm very pleased uh, that my co-host uh, Zakaria El Shamali is here with me again here at the Università della Svizzera Italiana. He's a doctoral fellow at the UN University in Maastricht and a researcher at the Carnegie Endowment in Brussels. And he's also a young change maker of the MEM Summer Summit Forum. And it's true, it's a promising future for all of the participants in this forum. So happy to be here all today in Lugano. Please, Zakaria. Thank you very much, Diana. It's absolutely a pleasure to be back, uh, not just uh, as a representative of young change makers and here, but also to share a stage with someone that I know very well now, Diana. Diana doesn't need an introduction. She's been with MEM since the start. So she's been here shaping the forum. She's, of course, a cultural mediator, and she works uh, as an advisor in arts, culture, and the media in both Switzerland and the Middle East. Of course, I would also like to welcome our guests, established uh, esteemed ambassadors and ministers, and of course, most importantly, the young change makers. You are here, the conference is for you, the forum is for you, so let's hope that this will be a fun one. What do we have next, Diana? Thank you very much, uh, Zach. Mm -hmm. So, I would like to give the floor to our host, the Pro-Rector of Education and Students experience at the Università della Svizzera Italiana. Please, before you, welcome speech. Thank you for hosting us. Monsieur le Ministre, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur, gentile Signore Presidente del Consiglio Comunale della Città di Lugano che ci ospita, care eh, amiche, cari amici, dear Good colleagues and friends, dear change makers, it's a great pleasure and honor to welcome all of you on behalf of the rector, Professoressa Luisa Lambertini, here at UZI, Università della Svizzera Italiana. UZI is a very young university. We started in last century, but it was 1996. Um, and I must say, we are growing pretty well. Uh, we are very well ranked in international rankings. We are considered uh, by the body which uh, studies the level of internationalization of Swiss universities, Movezia. We are considered the most international university in Switzerland, uh, not only because of uh, the more than 100 nationalities of our students and professors, but also because of collaborations in research and in teaching with universities all around the world. So while preparing for welcoming you, uh, I was reflecting on the incredible mission the minister has, looking after culture, youth, uh, and uh, reflecting on, on those elements, uh, I thought, okay, what do they have in common? Culture comes from the Latin word colo, which means to look after, to take care of something. And in Latin, it could be used at three different levels or layers. The first one is to look after your physical environment. And this is agriculture. And there's a lot to do with ecological sustainability, making sure that a community, a society, looks after its own physical environment. The second level is cultivating or looking after new generations. And again, this is the very definition of sustainability. So we do so through educational environment like universities, uh, as well as through art and culture at large. And then there is a third layer, which is the way a community or a society articulates uh, its own relationship with God. And this is cult. 
And every new generation, youth, has to receive this heritage and reflect on it, compare it, take decisions, very responsible and important decisions about the present and the future. And here we come to the third mission of the minister, which is communication. Communication means sharing of values, but because of bad scholars in communication like myself, we have kind of convinced people that communication means casting, even broadcasting messages. This is not communication at all. This is just expression. Communication happens if and only if an act of expression meets an act of listening, of understanding. And this is exactly what has happened in the last two weeks here. Young change makers really willing to listen to each other, to understand each other's values and traditions and heritage, and build together a common culture. So thank you for being here and enjoy this meeting. Thank you so much for this uh, inspiring and cultural opening of this uh, very forum. Thank you so much, uh, Prorector. Now I would like to give a warm welcome to an amazingly engaged lawyer and woman, not only doing things for Lugano, for the city. She is uh, the president of the City Council of Lugano. Morena Ferrari Gamba, please, your welcome speech. Madame, Monsieur, bonjour. Alors, <laughs> au nom des autorités de la municipalité de Lugano, je vous remercie d'être ici dans notre belle ville et je vous adresse mes plus chaleureux bienvenus au forum de même. Il s'agit là d'un événement unique qui, au fil des années, a acquis une place de tout respect au niveau international et qui promeut dans un contexte jeune et dynamique les chances de points de vue et la connaissance mutuelle. Le même touche aujourd'hui à sa fin, à l'issue de dix jours intenses de séances, séminaires, rencontres et conférences. Grâce aux interventions et analyses des représentants qualifiés du monde académique, entrepreneurial et intellectuel, on a pu voir émerger des réflexions et des idées qui contribuent de manière significative à votre connaissance personnelle. Il est réconfortant de voir des jeunes gens provenant de 35 pays du Moyen-Orient et de la zone de la Méditerranée pouvant se rencontrer, partager, confronter des idées, des projets et des expériences. Il s'agit là d'un exercice vertueux qui permettra de repenser l'avenir et de donner des réponses concrètes aux nombreux problèmes qui affectent notre planète. Urgence climatique, conflits, insûreté économique et sociale, ce sont là des questions que touchent de près, surtout les jeunes générations. Et je suis donc convaincue que votre participation revient en valeur particulière. Le fait que cet important sommet organisé par l'Université de la Suisse italienne, avec laquelle nous développons des importantes synergies, se tienne à Lugano, nous rend particulièrement fiers et souligne également notre vocation de ville ouverte et en défense de la paix entre les peuples. Lugano n'est pas seulement la plus grande réalité urbaine du canton Tessin, c'est aussi une ville cosmopolite. Nous avons plus de 140 nationalités différentes qui comptent 21 quartiers, 72 km² d'extension territoriale et presque 70 habitants. Ce que nous fait la neuvième ville de la Suisse par le nombre d'habitants et la deuxième agglomération urbaine par l'extension territoriale. Lugano, à la fois lac et montagne, 
est une ville à vocation internationale qui a su rester à taille humaine. C'est une ville accueillante qui veille à offrir à ses habitants, mais aussi à ses visiteurs, des services de haute qualité dans tous les secteurs. Nous disposons de vastes zones résidentielles, d'un patrimoine naturel unique et d'un centre historique attrayant. Tous ces éléments contribuent à faire de Lugano un lieu idéal pour vivre, étudier et travailler. Lugano s'engage et pose les bases nécessaires à son développement futur avec plusieurs projets. Le pôle sportif des événements avec le stade et le palais des sports qui verra le jour le, en 2026. Le futur pôle des congrès et des événements qui pourra accueillir entre les 1500 et les 3000 personnes, mais aussi d'autres importants projets en cours de réalisation pour améliorer les infrastructures, le territoire, les espaces et les offres culturelles locaux et internationales. Il s'agit pour la ville d'un plan stratégique ambitieux qui nous permettra de devenir encore plus le centre d'un réseau complexe fait d'échanges culturels et sociaux, de relations et de vie. Un échange fructueux entre le monde de la connaissance et le monde de l'entreprise. Un formidable humus pour nous, pour vous et pour nos citoyens. Je pense que cette vision correspond exactement à l'esprit de ces journées de rencontre. Je conclue en remerciant l'université pour la réussite de, de cette sixième édition du même et tout particulièrement par le le comité d'organisation qui, encore cette année, a mis au point un programme extrêmement stimulant et instructif. La ville de Lugano est avec, est avec vous aujourd'hui, mais aussi à l'avenir, pour que cet événement même reste un lieu privilégié sur le plan éducatif, intellectuel et culturel, aussi pour nous-mêmes, mais aussi pour tous en particulier pour vous, les jeunes, que vous pouvez et vous deviez apporter le vrai changement dont ce monde a autant besoin. Je vous remercie de votre attention et je vous souhaite une bonne continuation de travail de cette Summer Summit. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Morena. In the spirit of multilingualism, this is the heart of the MEM Summer Summit. We come with all of our languages and somehow we find the shared connection that we can all communicate and actually listen here, even if there are different languages. Now we have a video message in Italian from Marina Carobbio Guscetti, who is a member of the Cantonal uh, Council and Director of the Department of Education, Culture and Sport here in Ticino. We will have a video, so uh, at least this time is with subtitle on the video. Let's watch. Dear Excellences, Authorities, Students, Changemakers, Ladies and Gentlemen, è un grande onore per me portarvi il saluto del Governo Cantonale e eh, anche il saluto del Dipartimento che dirigo, il Dipartimento dell'Educazione, della Formazione e dello Sport. Ciò che ci unisce è più importante di ciò che divide. Questa frase racchiude anche l'importanza e il significato del fatto che voi siete presenti in questi giorni a Lugano, all'Università della Svizzera Italiana e siete presenti a questa giornata. Grazie alle vostre esperienze di vita, alle vostre esperienze come studenti, come ricercatori, eh, potete eh, condividere con delle altre persone quanto avete imparato e appunto avere degli scambi ma anche unirci. E quindi, Per me è molto importante che a ospitare questa manifestazione sia ancora una volta l'Università della Svizzera Italiana, così come è stato eh, in passato. L'Università della Svizzera Italiana è al, al, una delle 35 migliori giovani università del mondo, secondo il Times Higher Education World University, University Ranking. Eh, questo è anche motivo d'orgoglio per chi come me dirige il Dipartimento della Formazione e dell'Educazione del Canton Ticino. 
Mi spiace non poter essere qui con voi fisicamente, ma solo portarvi un saluto in videoconferenza. Ringrazio comunque voi che partecipate, ma anche a tutti e tutti gli organizzatori che hanno reso possibile ancora una volta questo evento. Grazie e buon lavoro. Grazie mille Marina Carobbio, uh, freshly elected into this very important cultural uh, post here in Ticino. So we hope to have her next year. Another absent, at least here physically, uh, is one of the most important backers of the Swiss Summer Summit Forum. It's His Excellency Ignazio Cassis. He is the Federal Councillor of the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs here in Switzerland. He uh, was the president of Switzerland uh, last year and he's from Lugano. So many of you know that he's been really supporting us with an amazing, you know, enthusiasm and really believes in this project with the young change makers. So let's listen to his words in video. Thank you so much. Cari giovani partecipanti al MEM, eccellenze, care e cari colleghi e amici. Six years ago, in 2018, the Università della Svizzera Italiana launched the Middle East Mediterranean Summer Summit. The aim was to create a dialogue between young people living in countries with high geopolitical tensions. By targeting young people and creating an opportunity for dialogue in a safe environment, it was hoped that, over time, a positive dynamic would be created to find solutions to the many conflicts that plague the MENA region. This is all part of our promotion of peace and stability in the interest of the MENA region, but also of Europe and therefore of Switzerland. The university had asked us to support the initiative with financial and human resources, so that the knowledge of our ministry could improve the initiative's chances of success. I liked the idea and had therefore de decided to support this new platform, to add to the many efforts we are making within our foreign policy in the framework of the MENA strategy. I was also proud to be able to work on such a project in my hometown of Lugano. I physically took part in the first two editions, inviting various ministers from your countries. In recent years, we have welcomed the foreign ministers of uh, Tunisia, Oman, Lebanon, as well as the Minister for Youth from the United Arab Emirates and the Minister of Energy, Commerce and Industry of Malta. This year, we have the pleasure to welcome His Excellency Mohammed Mahdi Ben Zaid, Minister of Youth, Culture and Communication from the Kingdom of Morocco. Unfortunately, the pandemic first stopped us and then forced us to use the virtual format. A format that is not very suitable for listening to other person at close quarters, for understanding them by looking directly into their eyes. My concern is with the selection of participants. I want them to be as representative as possible of the use of your countries, of your diversity, of your real problems and aspirations. The fact that the meeting is organized by a university must not make it an elitist or academic meeting, but one that is firmly rooted in reality. Today is the sixth edition and we are physically back in Lugano. I would like to thank the Universidad della Svizzera Italiana for its perseverance and assure my continued support because I believe it is worth investing in our use. In this beautiful, tranquil city of Lugano, una gran bella città, which last year hosted the first Ukraine Recovery Conference, we perhaps forget for a moment that today's multipolar world is desperately seeking stability, security and peace. Après une pandémie, la guerre a fait son retour en Europe, avec ses séquelles néfastes sur le plan humain, énergétique, alimentaire et financier. Pas loin de la Suisse, des conflits perdurent depuis bien trop longtemps. Au Yémen, en Syrie, en Libye, au Liban, sans compter la fragilité des Balkans occidentaux ou l'émergence de la région du Sahel. Nous vivons actuellement des changements radicaux. De nouveaux centres de pouvoir émergent. La prétention occidentale à la validité universelle des valeurs et des droits est remise en question. La nouvelle géopolitique se moque couramment du principe selon lequel le monde est fondé sur des règles. Le droit de la force l'emporte souvent, trop souvent, sur la force du droit. 
La démocratie est en recul. De nouvelles formes d'intelligence artificielle vont marquer la société aussi fortement qu'Internet ou le smartphone auparavant. La crise climatique s'accompagne de profonds changements et déstabilise les pays avec ses flux migratoires. Chers jeunes, nous vivons une époque certainement parmi les plus dangereuses depuis la fin de la Seconde Guerre mondiale. Les grandes puissances, nous rappelle Henry Kissinger, n'ont pas de principe. Elles ont seulement des intérêts. Et Kissinger en a vu de choses au cours de ses 100 ans de vie. Mais quel est notre intérêt le plus grand sinon la paix C'est dans ce contexte que le dialogue qui nous réunit aujourd'hui prend tout son sens. C'est dans ce contexte que la Suisse assume sa responsabilité. Puisque le dialogue fait partie de notre ADN. Nous, les Suisses, parlons, écrivons, pensons et parfois rêvons au moins en quatre langues différentes. Nos valeurs sont ancrées dans des religions et cultures différentes, ainsi que dans notre Magna Carta, la Constitution. Pour garantir à tout un chacun sa liberté, nous assumons la responsabilité de nous respecter. C'est un pacte suisse, un pacte que nous pratiquons depuis des siècles pour vivre en paix entre nous. Un pacte qui n'est pas donné une fois pour toutes, comme ne l'est pas la paix. La paix n'est jamais garantie. Il faut la bâtir au jour le jour. Voici à quoi vous êtes appelés ici à Lugano, à définir les bases de la paix dans le respect réciproque. Peace is never guaranteed. It must be built day by day. This is what we are called to do here in Lugano, to lay the foundations for peace with mutual respect. Dear young people, you came from one of the most historically rich regions of the world. Your region is a cradle of civilization and has seen many of the world's oldest cultures. Your region's history stretches from the earliest human settlements through several empires to today's nation states. In your region, there are unstable places with few prospects. The suffering of the young people in these places is our suffering. And the solution doesn't come on its own. Your challenge is to change the situation, to improve the prospects. Yes, I know I, it's not easy and it's not safe, but it's possible, as history teaches us. And dialogue is the most powerful and sustainable tool you have at your disposal. And you can afford it at no cost. Change begins in people's mind. It takes time, creativity and commitment. In a democracy, nobody is completely right or wrong. You have to find compromises. There's a typical Swiss saying that a solution is good enough if everyone is equally unhappy. This year, we are celebrating the 175th anniversary of modern Switzerland and 732 years of Swiss history. Despite this long experience, we are still fighting every day for our national cohesion. When dialogue is necessary, compromise is essential. Compromise is a sign of strength, not weakness. Nothing is easy. Nothing is quick. Human beings are like that. We witness the tensions between the great powers, which frighten us. Sometimes we feel powerless. The obstacles and disappointments are not on our side. But that doesn't mean we should give up. On the contrary, every frustration must strengthen our determination to pursue our goals. Like effective, focused, efficient multilateralism. You are here in search of freedom, the freedom of people, the freedom of your ideas. You speak of the right to freedom. But this right to freedom can only survive if it is accompanied by the duty of responsibility. By coming here, you are setting an example. You are taking responsibility. I hope you will debate and disagree and learn to disagree. Learning to deal with conflict constructively and not violently is fundamental to any democracy. In Switzerland, we are still working on this. And you with us during your stay here in Lugano, I urge you to listen to each other and to embrace dialogue with quiet inner strengths in order to grow. Be proud to be here Enjoy all differences, enjoy the plurality, keep up the good work. These were strong, inspiring words, but also it is very daunting, the challenge that is ahead of us. It's not just environmental, it's not just peace and security, it's not just the economy and the fragmentation of trade. There is a lot that we need to take care of. And the words of Mr. Cassis are really inspiring because in this place, in Lugano, we were able to come together like the old uh, Europeans came in Bruges in 1948 to create the College of Europe. So who knows, maybe one day we'll create the College of the Mediterranean here in Lugano. But until then, we need to keep listening to the youth. And who better to uh, talk to us about the youth than His Excellence, Mohammed Mehdi bin Saeed, the Minister of Youth, Culture and Communication from the Kingdom of Morocco.
اهلا وسهلا بونجورنو سي دير جيست فيرست ابولوجايز ماي انجليش از فيري باد سو اي بريفير تو سبيك ان ان فرنش السلام عليكم اولا السلام على الشباب العربي والشباب المغربي المغاربي ليس فقط المغربي مسيو البريزيدون اكسيلونس مسيو ميدام لي امباسادور اون اورابل انفيتي شيرز ايتوديان ايتوديانت سي افيك ان غران اونور اي ان ايمونس بليزير كو جاشيست اوجوردي على 6 ام ايديسيون دو فوروم دو ميدليست ميتيرانيان سومر سوميت اي ا سيت ايغار جو فودري فو بريزونتي مي فيف ريمرسيمون بور افوار انفيتي لو رويوم دو ماروك بور اي بروندر بار جو ريمرسي بار لا ميم اوكازيون لونيفرسيتي دي لا سوزيرا ايتاليانا اي لو مينيستير فيدرال دي زافير ايتخونجير بور لوغانيزاسيون كونجوان دو سو سومي دو غران دونفيغور ديمونترون لو فور انتيري دي جون بور لو ديفلوبمون اي لو فرانشيسمون دي زوبستاكل اي ديفي كو كوني نوتر موند اوجوردي Dans cette optique, le Royaume du Maroc attache une importance capitale à la jeunesse, reconnaissant en elle une véritable richesse, une force motrice essentielle, ainsi qu'une dynamique incontestable qui sous-entend le progrès économique et social. Et c'est en étant convaincu de cette réalité que Sa Majesté le Roi poursuit inlassablement des actions, des déploie des efforts visant à promouvoir et à favoriser l'épanouissement de cette partie cruciale de la population. Cette conviction s'est récemment exprimée lors du discours du trône le plus récent, où il a souligné que, à chaque fois que la jeunesse marocaine a eu les, effo- les moyens de donner la pleine mesure de son sérieux et de son patriotisme, elle a fasciné le monde par des performances d'un calibre inédit, citant notamment la réussite de l'équipe nationale lors de la dernière Coupe du Monde, il fallait en parler. Et je rappelle que le football aujourd'hui n'est pas uniquement un sport, mais c'est aussi de l'économie et parfois de la géopolitique, mais également les différentes inventions technologiques et industrielles. La région que nous appelons notre foyer est un carrefour de civilisation, une mosaïque de culture et de tradition qui s'étend sur des millénaires. Mais c'est aussi une région qui a connu son lot de défis et de turbulences. Aujourd'hui, alors que nous nous rassemblons ici, nous ne pouvons ignorer les complexités de notre passé et les réalités de notre présent. Mais il est essentiel que nous nous tournions vers l'avenir avec espoir, détermination et une vision audacieuse. La jeunesse, bien sûr, est le levier du changement. Dans vos cœurs et esprits, parfois je dis dans nos cœurs parce que j'estime que je suis relativement jeune, Euh, résident les idées novatrices, les rêves ambitieux et les aspirations à une vie meilleure pour tous. Votre énergie, notre énergie et passion sont des ressources inestimables qui peuvent façonner un avenir où la paix, la prospérité et la justice prévalent. Nous devons donner à nos jeunes les moyens d'apprendre, de grandir et de s'exprimer. Nous devons créer des espaces où leurs voix sont entendues, où leurs idées sont prises en compte et où leur potentiel est pleinement réalisé. L'investissement, bien sûr, dans l'éducation, la formation professionnelle et l'accès aux opportunités économiques et sociales est essentiel pour libérer le potentiel de cette jeunesse. Nous devons favoriser un environnement qui encourage l'innovation, la collaboration et l'entrepreneuriat en unissant nos efforts pour soutenir les jeunes, nos investissements finalement dans un avenir, parfois je dis aussi le présent, de nos nations et de notre région tout entière. Cependant, la jeunesse a besoin d'un cadre solide pour s'épanouir et c'est là que la culture entre en jeu. La culture est un reflet de notre identité et de notre histoire. Elle transcende les frontières et les différences, offrant un terrain commun où les valeurs humaines fondamentales se rejoignent. Dans un monde en constante évolution, où la communication et, la, et les interactions se multiplient, la culture peut jouer un rôle crucial pour construire des ponts et établir des relations durables. La diversité culturelle de notre région est une richesse inestimable. En célébrant nos traditions, nos langues et nos coutumes, nous renforçons notre tissu social et renouvelons notre engagement envers la coexistence pacifique. La culture peut être un catalyseur pour le dialogue interculturel et interreligieux, créant ainsi des espaces de compréhension mutuelle et de respect. Les jeunes d'aujourd'hui sont les bâtisseurs de demain et les ponts que nous construirons sont des liens qui nous unirons dans notre quête, dans nos quêtes communes. Bâtir des ponts signifie renforcer la coopération régionale, promouvoir la tolérance et l'inclusion et travailler ensemble pour relever les défis mondiaux tels que le changement climatique, la sécurité et bien sûr le développement durable. Mesdames et messieurs, favoriser et renforcer un engagement multiforme entre les peuples et les pays qui respectent et valorisent leur identité diverse et leur approche spécifique des problèmes communs a le potentiel de promouvoir et de maintenir un dialogue mondial profond. La culture constitue une facette inévitable des relations internationales et la diplomatie culturelle est devenue l'un des outils les plus respectés au sein des stratégies diplomatiques. En explorant ces liens entre culture, politique et coopération internationale, nous ouvrons la voie à une compréhension plus profonde et à des relations renforcées. La culture transcende les barrières nationales et linguistiques. 
offrant un terrain neutre où des discussions franches peuvent avoir lieu ou où des ponts de compréhension peuvent être construits. En reconnaissant la puissance de la culture dans la création des ponts entre les nations, nous sommes en mesure de jeter les bases d'un avenir plus harmonieux et plus interconnecté. En tant que jeunes leaders engagés, nous avons le pouvoir et la responsabilité de façonner un avenir où la, cult où la culture est un outil de paix et de progrès. C'est en unissant nos voix et en valorisant nos cultures que nous pouvons réellement bâtir une région florissante et harmonieuse pour tous. De plus, en parlant de la construction d'un avenir meilleur, il est essentiel de souligner l'importance et de l'engagement civique. Les jeunes aujourd'hui ne sont pas seulement les bénéficiaires potentiels de changements positifs, mais aussi des agents actifs du changement. L'engagement civique va au-delà de la simple participation électorale. Cela implique de s'impliquer activement dans la société, d'élever la voix contre les injustices, de contribuer au processus de prise de décision et de, col de collaborer pour créer des solutions durables. L'engagement civique est un pilier fondamental pour le développement d'une région résiliente et démocratique. Lorsque les jeunes se mobilisent pour des causes qui leur tiennent à cœur, ils démontrent un attachement profond à leur société et aux valeurs qu'elles représentent. En participant à des, à des initiatives civiques, à des projets de bénévolat et à des mouvements sociaux, les jeunes exercent leur influence et contribuent à façonner un avenir où la justice, l'égalité et les droits de l'homme prévalent. C'est ainsi que la jeunesse peut jouer un rôle crucial dans le, dans le développement de la région du Moyen-Orient et de la Méditerranée. En alliant leur énergie à leur engagement civique, les jeunes peuvent contribuer à créer un environnement où la culture, le dialogue et la coopération transcendent les divisions et renforcent les liens entre les pays et entre les peuples. Mesdames et messieurs, dans ce contexte complexe et évolutif, le rôle des institutions publiques est également d'une importance capitale pour préserver la jeunesse, leur offrir une voie significative ainsi que les outils nécessaires à leur développement, et face aux défis majeurs tels que les transformations géopolitiques, les enjeux climatiques et les menaces du chômage, il incombe aux institutions publiques de garantir que les jeunes ne se sentent pas désarmés face à ces obstacles. La recherche continue des moyens novateurs pour cultiver et valoriser le capital humain est un impératif. Cela nécessite une approche proactive pour fournir aux jeunes des opportunités de formation, d'éducation et de participation politique dont ils ont besoin pour façonner leur propre avenir et contribuer à celui de la région dans son ensemble. En encourageant un environnement où les jeunes sont écoutés, où leurs préoccupations sont prises en compte et leur potentiel est pleinement reconnu, les institutions publiques peuvent jouer un rôle crucial dans l'autonomisation de la jeunesse et la création d'une génération prête à relever les défis du présent et à saisir, bien sûr, les opportunités du futur. Ensemble, nous avons la capacité de transformer les défis en opportunités et de construire un avenir où la jeunesse et la culture sont des forces motrices du progrès, alors que nous continuons nos discussions au cours de ce forum, gardant à l'esprit que notre avenir est entre nos mains, en embrassant la diversité culturelle, en favorisant l'engagement civique et en œuvrant ensemble, nous, pou nous pouvons véritablement bâtir des ponts vers une région pacifique, prospère et, je l'espère, unifiée pour les générations à venir. Je vous remercie. Merci, euh, Monsieur le ministre. C'était vraiment une belle inspiration d'écouter euh, vos mots et justement votre poste. C'est vraiment euh, ce qui fait euh, développer euh, tous les jeunes gens, euh, pas seulement de, de votre pays, mais de la planète euh, en, en général. Donc, merci beaucoup pour ces, euh, ce, cette ouverture euh, qui inspire beaucoup. So we're gonna switch to English again. Now we've got a very special guest, um, Alexandra Xantaki. She's got an amazing title. I'm a bit jealous. She's the UN Special Rapporteur in the field of cultural rights. It's so very warm welcome on screen from Switzerland, but really on the other uh, side of Switzerland. Um, Professor Xantaki has uh, published over 50 publications Uh, varying from cultural rights of minorities, indigenous rights, and cultural diversity. So it's really about this amazing panoply of culture uh, that you have been researching and well deserved this amazing title where you're doing very, very important work, not only for the UN, but for the entire community. So thank you and warm welcome uh, via Skype. Please, Professor. Thank you so much and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I am delighted to be here in the opening discussion. Um, 
and the title, uh, the title, I will, I like it as well, but I will only hold on to it for another four years, where I'm going to um, give the baton to somebody else to work um, also uh, under this title. So United Nations Special Rapporteurs um, are what we call the special procedures at the United Nations. We are, I think, 55 of those at the moment, and we are independent experts uh, who have been appointed by uh, the Human Rights Council to monitor the implementation of our um, of, of the right that uh, our mandate focuses on. So in my case, cultural rights. Um, and we do this um, by various ways, but mainly by uh, official state visits. Um, I am delighted that next year we're going to be in Jordan, um, but also uh, where we discuss the implementation, the successes and uh, the challenges um, of um, implementing cultural rights um, by thematic um, uh, studies and reports to every year on specific issues. Um, and finally, by uh, important confidential uh, discussions and dialogue with states on alleged violations that have come to our um, knowledge by uh, civil society. Um, so my role uh, is very much focused on um, um, making everyone understand that culture is should be seen in a very wide uh, way. Uh, culture is now interpreted as a way of life. So traditionally, we have focused on cultural rights as uh, the right to uh, tangible uh, culture. Uh, but now we know uh, for the last um, 20 years that when we talk about culture, we we talk about um, not only about the amazing buildings, not only about uh, buildings that are not amazing but are very um, important for um, specific individuals and communities, but we also talk about philosophies, practices, customs, values, uh, literatures, um, and um, uh, food, um, and uh, etc. So you can see that when we talk about culture, um, we we have a wide array of um, expressions. So um, the right to um, uh, participate in culture, take part in culture, as has been um, recognized in international instruments uh, means the right to access but also participation um, to the uh, development, uh, maintenance, but also development of all these um, practices, um, values, ways of life, uh, etc., and also to the protection of um, intangible living culture, but also the the. Um, the, the, the buildings in in um, times of peace, but also in times of um, tensions. And, and unfortunately, at the moment, uh, with um, more than 20 ethnic conflicts in the world, we see the how culture sometimes is being uh, used um, to as, as a tool of war. And what um, my mandate emphasizes is that culture is a tool of um, transformation. Um, uh, my mandate, I'm delighted that my mandate is um, a mandate that focuses on the right to inspire. So the right to take um, a part in culture means the right to inspire, the right to um, uh, be free to um, talk about, um, discuss, and also um, uh, live uh, one's uh, life according to one's values, one's philosophies, uh, one's aesthetics, etc. At the moment, there is a lot of discussion about sustainable development, and my mandate has been um, involved quite a lot in, in this discussion. Um, I am not going to be overly romantic. The reality is that cultural rights are still the Cinderella of human rights, and what we are, and, and even more so, the Cinderella of sustainable development. Um, states and, and various actors, um, including the international uh, organizations, 
uh, financial trade, etc., still um, choose uh, to see uh, sustainable development as mainly economic development. But how can we have sustainable development if the people and the communities are not the ones to decide on their development priorities according to their philosophies, to implement their practices and lead their own development plans? Time and time again, we see development that is alien to the values and the practices of the people concerned. So the implementation of cultural rights is paramount if sustainable development is to be truly sustainable. And unfortunately, we see that at the moment in the discussion of the um, um, sustainable development goals and in the forthcoming uh, SDG summit, which is going to take place uh, next month, uh, the recognition of the role of culture, the role of cultural diversity, and the role of cultural rights for sustainable development remains poor and lacks a true understanding of what is at stake. Uh, culture should be the fourth dimension of sustainable development, and we cannot wait another five years until um, we really um, uh, uh, ensure that no one is left behind, as is the motto of the United Nations. And in order for no one to be left behind, we have to ensure that when we talk about sustainable development, we talk about truly um, inclusive sustainable development, bottom-up sustainable development. And, and this is how cultural rights are at the core of sustainable development, and we all have to work um, towards um, the, this message uh, being uh, spread um, to all actors. So my previous report was about development and sustainable, um, sustainable development and culturalize the principles. And my forthcoming report to the General Assembly is about the international organizations such as the um, World Bank, the WTO, um, and, uh, and, and other organizations that uh, choose to focus only on economic development. But let's make no mistake. International organizations do what states um, decide that should be done. International organizations are not these amorphous uh, entities. They are the collection of states. So states, um, what my role is, uh, is to ensure that states realize that cultural developments are not aspirations. Cultural developments are legal obligations that states have undertaken by signing and ratifying um, the, the various uh, UN uh, human rights uh, treaties. Um, and, and I think that this is very important. Um, states talk about um, um, cultural uh, culture with a smile uh, and, and cultural rights. But when we go to the implementation, I think that maybe there is a, 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 a weakness there. And maybe this weakness is bef because of maybe the fuzzy um, uh, concept, the fuzziness of the concept of culture, which which is, you know, what makes it really important and really transformational. So as, as the UN Special Rapporteur in the field of cultural rights, I invite states and other actors in a dialogue um, so that we all understand that when we talk about um, cultural rights, we talk about legal obligations and, and to um, discuss the various aspects of what these legal obligations entail. But I don't want to leave um, aside the civil society. The civil society also has a really important um, role to play. It has a really important role to play, first of all, to continue to educate us um, the, the, the experts, but also um, the, the states and the rest of the humanity about the challenges that are faced, um, about um, how we can support inclusive access to culture and participation in cultural life, how we can strengthen the um, artistic freedom that is being at stake, how we can uh, protect the cultural diversity, and whether the legal and policy frameworks work um, or not are implemented within the states or not. And finally, to expand, to help us find ways to expand um, the uh, efforts to promote the protection, return and restitution of cultural property. 
So this civil society, what my mandate has promised them, is to make them active actors uh, in our uh, quest to implement cultural rights. And what we do is we try uh, together with um, our uh, uh, allies, the states, uh, to ensure that everyone has the right to inspire. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alexandra. This right to inspire is something that really got me thinking. And when we're talking about cultural rights, uh, we also in our generation, we really think a lot about generational rights as well. So it's across space, but also across time. We need to see the different dimensions. So now we can move from culture to how cultures interact which is what we call in academia international relations. This will be our last keynote speaker, His Excellence Jacques Ducret. He's ambassador and head of international relations division at the State Secretariat for Education, Research and Innovation in Switzerland. Bienvenue, Jacques. Minister, Mr. Prorector, Madam President, dear change makers, I'm looking at you today especially. Dear guests, thank you very much for inviting me today to this, uh, to this summit, to the sixth summit, and uh, I'm very happy to bring here today live the greetings and the words from Bern, from the capital. And I'm very happy to, to follow today in this presentation, in this round of discussion, my predecessor speaker, the UN Special Rapporteur, because I want to speak also about sustainable development. Because we have a common interest. We have a common interest worldwide to make sure that our planet, our humanity, we keep being sustainable. And we want to be and we have to be sustainable in all dimensions, in social dimensions, in economic dimensions, in environmental dimensions, in cultural dimensions, as it was just mentioned, and this in peace and partnerships. Dear change makers, that's a challenge. That's a challenge because you have to bring all these dimensions in balance. You have to try to bring them all in balance and sometimes you have the chance to benefit from each other and sometimes you have to make some trade-offs. And these are difficult. And these are difficult ones which you have to do together with politicians, with scientists or with different actors of society. In 2015, the United Nations adopted a very important document, in my view, this 2030 Agenda Sustainable for Development. I like this agenda especially because it's a complete change of paradigm. It's completely different from the Millennium Development Goals of 2000. Why? Because it is not an agenda for the Global South. It is an agenda for the whole world. We are all developing countries. This means that we all have something to do in the implementation of the 17 development goals and the 169 targets. And where do we stand? We are now at midterm of this agenda, another seven years to go. And of course, COVID came through. The situation is not very good. Of course, we did some progress in different dimensions, in education, for example. But we still have a lot of work to do, we still have a lot of investment to do, we still have a lot of political decision to take. But the fact is, in certain dimensions, we are moving backwards. We are moving backwards in terms of climate protection, we are moving backwards in terms of protection of biodiversity, and these are things we cannot let, let this way. In 2022, Switzerland presented its second voluntary national report, and like any, also countries, we took note about the challenge we have. The challenge we have in sustainable production and consumption, the challenges we have in climate protection, in biodiversity, in energy, renewable production, and also in equal opportunities. And we have taken note that we all have to work on this. And if we want to reach all these goals, the ones we have in Switzerland, but the ones each and every country around the world is actually assessing every four years in its own voluntary national report, we have to work with you, we have to work with the society, we have to work with the civil society, we have to work with the financial sector. We have to make sure that we move to sustainable finance. We have to make sure that the economy 
contributes to the environmental dimension, but we also have to make sure that the economy remains sustainable. And we have to work also with the education, research and innovation. Education, research and innovation are key in the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. We need to communicate, but we need also solutions. And if the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is, in my view, not a political agenda, it is an agenda for the humanity. What is political is how to get there. Do you want to regulate? Do you want to forbid? Or do you want to set framework conditions? Do you want to give incentives? It's up to the politicians to decide. But a matter is sure, we need research and innovation because it can help us moving out of certain difficult situations. And in this respect, Switzerland believes, like many countries, in certain principles in research and innovation, which are at your disposal, dear change makers. We believe in the bottom-up approach. You know what's good. You know where you are strong. You know where you have good contact. We don't have to tell you what to do. We want to rely on your autonomy. We want to rely on your openness. And I think that the best thing we can do, if we want to reach excellence, we have to give you good opportunities to compete. And in this respect, we are very happy in Switzerland to work together with the Kingdom of Morocco. We've been working a long time in research innovation, in cooperation. And uh, recently, in 2022, we launched again a new call, a new call for projects. And we were amazed by the number of projects which came from young researchers in different fields, biotechnologies, education sciences, cognitive sciences, migration, food. Food is important. Food is extremely important because you have in the food, in the value chain of the food, you have more or less all the dimensions of sustainable development. You have to protect the soils. You have to make sure that the agricultural production is sustainable. You have to make sure that the way you transform the product is sustainable. And if all this is sustainable, you may have people happy to consume, and you may be, ha be happy to have people not going in the hospitals. Congratulations to the Kingdom of Morocco for the program Excellence in Africa. Launched by the University of Mohammed VI Polytechnique and the Federal Institute of Technology, the EPFL in Lausanne. I think this is a wonderful example of cooperation to promote digital transformation, to promote to encourage young people to write doctorates, to do research which will have an impact on our society, which will have an impact on our sustainable uh, development. I would like to, to finish my brief intervention by, by a topic which is, very, which is very close to my heart, the education. I think we owe to the young people, we owe to the youth to propose to them an education which corresponds to the needs of the economy. I think the worst we can do is to propose an education which do not give them chances to develop and give, do not give ch chances to, to find a job. And in this respect, I think there is a certain format of education which is quite well known in Switzerland called vocational education and training. A format which is, a, a, which is extremely important in terms of interaction between all the actors of the economy and the education and on which Switzerland is very happy to, to exchange and to cooperate. We need the voice of the economy. In the State Secretary of, economy, of, of Education, Research and Innovation, sorry, we don't really know what the economy needs. We know that we want to offer diplomas which are recognized nationwide, but we have to listen to the economy. And you know, every year we offer 250 different professions to about two-thirds of the Swiss population, of the Swiss people, of the people living in Switzerland. And this list of 250 jobs, education, evolve every four years. Why? Because every four years we review them. We decided to drop some because they do not fit anymore to the economy. We adapt them because some jobs have to be adapted to the new challenges, or to the new technologies. And sometimes we have to propose new technologies. We have to propose new jobs. And this is something we, we want to do and we need to do with you, dear change makers. Please speak to the economy, or if you are the economy, speak to the, to the officials, because we need this dialogue. And with the permeability in all the education systems, we can make sure that we all find a way to be happy in our professional life. 
Recently, and I will conclude with this, the president of the ETH Zurich, of the Federal Institute of uh, Technology in Zurich said, do you know who are my best students? The one who started with an apprenticeship, went on with a professional baccalaureate and come to me. Because they have theoret theoretical, they have a practical element, and they have the best chance, the best element in hand to make the changes we need to become sustainable. Thank you for your attention. Merci beaucoup, uh, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur, uh, for this, um, yes, of course, very realistic words about all the challenges that are still ahead of us in sustainable development, climate change, and also juxtaposing it to the amazing uh, achievement we can really have with innovation, with thinking out of the box, and the solid basis of a good education. And that's exactly what the young changemakers, the 41 young changemakers here in Lugano have done uh, during the past 10 days. So we want to have some voices uh, of the outcomes of this dialogue and have a short video about the celebration of the Young Changemakers Seminar. Please. is a safe space where we get to know each other's stories and therefore became part of them. Encounters helped us break the wall of fear of the unknown and made us embrace our differences as well as the sense of belonging to a region with common history but most of all common future. It is fascinating how oppression sometimes and limitation people express themselves in artistic forms. Water has been a key element or in the direction of devising or in the direction of getting together. L'avenir, c'est notre jeunesse. I come from a region that is characterized by many social, political and economic failures. However, I believe that today we have at our disposal multiple tools that allow us to come together and find solutions that we can all benefit from. Il n'y a pas d'espace en fait comme le même finalement pour se rencontrer d'où qu'on vienne, qui qu'on soit et quelles que soient ses aspirations pour le futur. une capacité à rassembler l'énergie de nos jeunesses pour essayer quelque chose d'inné, encore à inventer.
seminar of the MEM Summer Summit is devoted to us. The young change makers. To the innovators. The dreamers. For the ones who are ready to work hard. To focus on what unites us. Not what divides us. In a safe space. To debate. To exchange ideas. To learn. To raise a challenging question. And we all know that the notion of mobility is intimately linked to the notion of acceptance of one another. Our generation deserves a new kind of narrative that is inclusive of all of us, all shades of us. You are more powerful than you think.